Hello and welcome to today's CamLogic Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to be covering solid edge assembly frame design. My name is William Hall. I am one of the AE team leads here and I have over six years in technical support for pre-sales, post-sales, and general Siemens support for all Siemens products that are available including NX, solid edge, and team center. Today we're going to be talking about the frame design tool inside of Solid Edge. We're going to talk about what the design tool is and what it can be used for. And we're going to look at three different ways to build a frame design in an assembly using a 2D sketch, a 3D sketch, and an existing part body. So what is the frame design tool? <clears throat> the frame design tool is used to be able to create path segments and structural frames using the frame design application in an assembly document. The frame design displays additional specialized commands for creating 2D and 3D path segments and for specifying the 3D frame component type you want to apply to the path segments. This makes it easy to construct components that use standard structural shapes such as square tubes, angles, and channels. It also allows you to have options to create um, specialized segments and custom um, paths and profiles for your frame design. So let's go ahead and jump into Solid Edge and take a look at that. Now in our first example we have just a simple 2D sketch that was created in the assembly environment. We're next going to navigate to the frame design tool in the assembly environment underneath the tools tab. We'll launch the frame design environment. Inside of the frame design environment, they, as mentioned before, there are a bunch of specialized commands that are here to help you design a frame design. Starting over on the left side, we have access to be able to create planes, of course, access to both 2D and 3D sketches, and our Path Express tools, which are commonly used for the routing and wire harness command uh, tools as well. Now I've gone ahead <clears throat> and already created a sketch for us to use here. So I'm going to activate my frame command. And initially, when launching the command, we'll be given a window for our frame options. Here, we'll be able to determine the frame orientation based on the X, Y, Y, Z, and X, Z planes. And if you toggle between these, you can see the orientation changes. Also, we have choices for orientation based on square and ground tubing. Below this, we have corner treatment options, whether or not to apply a corner treatment, and choose whether or not to miter the corner or have butt at the corner. Again, choose the orientation based on the corners, toggling between. Or if we wanted to come in and add additional corner treatment, such as an overflow, or rounding the edges, or whether or not to have a corner treatment at all. Once I'm satisfied with my frame options, I can click OK. And from here, I can come in and choose what type of uh, reference I'd like to select, whether an individual line or sketch, a chain of lines, or multiple sketches or sketch features. Next I want to choose what type of profile I want to use. Now we have a list of recently used. We also can browse to whether we have standard libraries such as ANSI or DIN. Navigate to any particular type whether we're looking at angle, channel, beam, or some sort of tubing. Make that selection. Now, as mentioned before, you can come in and create your own custom profiles. You are not limited to these. Simply create a cross-section piece, bring that in, save it to a location, and then browse to it. With my profile selected and my paths selected, I can relaunch the frame options if need be, but at this point, I can choose to accept this 
and see what my frame components will look like. So here, I'll click finish, close my frame options, and you'll see in our assembly tree, we have a frame that was generated consisting of several parts. Each individual tube is its own component now. If I were to turn this off, you can see what our cross section looks like for this. And upon saving, these parts will all be saved to the same file directory as your assembly as components. All right, let's move on to the next example. What I've done, what I've done here is created a series of two different 3D sketches. One has rounded corners using the 3D, 3D sketch commands with fillets. The other has sharp edges. And this is to show off the different corner treatments. Again, I'm going to launch the frame command or frame environment command. Open up frame. I'm going to leave this the same. We're going to apply the same miter on the frame corners. This time I'm going to change to round tubing instead of square. And I'm going to come in and select my chain. Now see, even because I have two sketches, it grabbed all of them because they're all connected. All right. So when generating this, you'll see it's gone and done two different things based on how my sketches were designed. When I have sharp corners, because of without changing my corner treatments to incorporate for rounded, they create individual components that run into each other and create a miter corner. We see this for each segment here. However, when I put in additional corner treatments to allow for bends, instead it creates one part that would be bent along that profile. So if you were creating a, bend, a part that would include bends, instead of weldments at the corners, you'd want to use this option. All right. For the last example, I've gone ahead and created a block, just a simple part that I would like to use as a reference to create a frame. Now, this is a simple block with no rounded edges, but I assure you can use rounds and edge blends in this is design as well. Again, launching the frame environment and the frame command. I don't have to make any changes here. The only thing different is I'm, instead of selecting a single edge or faces, I can choose to grab an entire body, which will grab all the edges. I'm going to use the round tubing again. And when I accept this, you'll see a frame component was generated on each edge. Now if I hide my block part, you'll see I'm left with just the frame built around it. Now if you wanted to add additional structure to this, you could do so. <clears throat> All you'd have to do is add additional sketches and include them in your frame design, either during the command or afterwards. All right, with that, that's just a quick overview of what the frame design inside of Solid Edge can do. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about this, please reach out to either myself or support line at williamh at camlogic.com or support at camlogic.com or you can call us at 855-955-0900 and we'd be more than happy to help answer any further questions or help on help you to understand more about the frame design command. Thank you very much and have a great day.